Hi, in this episode I'm going to teach you how to put a zipper in a bag, but not only how to put the zipper in, how to also, also texturize the fabric in a unique way using the Octi Hoops. And um, you can never have too many of these bags. Once you do it, you'll realize that there's many different ways of, uh, of making the bag ready to be made. This is uh, two pieces of fabrics that were just fused together using a uh, fusible webbing. And in this bag, I, I have a batting inside that gives it more body and helps it stand up straighter. This is uh, great for makeup. And inside of the bag, I have stitched some elastic straps for putting different things in. For instance, if you have makeup brushes and they get lost inside the bag, you can slide your makeup brushes underneath and inside of these little elastic loops. So two totally different looks and now I'm going to show you another look where we actually quilt the fabric. And when I did this I used a fusible batting and fused the batting to the front fabric and this is just a fabric I have held on to for a few years. I thought it was beautiful. I love the butterflies and um, so I'm really pleased with how this turned out. It also has kind of like a subtle print on the back which I followed to create this quilting look. And to make it even more uh, plush, I used a bridal satin on the inside of it and you can see how it glistens. So this would be great for fine jewelry, uh, things that you would worry about getting scratched. It's also a nice way to uh, make a Kindle case or a uh, iPad case. So to begin with, we um, fused fusible batting to the top and then I used spray adhesive on the batting itself. I went outside and uh, sprayed it and I used 3M brand uh, spray adhesive permanent and it becomes a repositionable sticker so you can peel it off and put it back on, peel it off, put it back on and um, that's helpful if it, if it should take you a while to complete your project. I'm going to use a really fine thread that we offer. It's a hundred weight polyester thread that's cottonized which makes it kind of muted so it doesn't really show up that much. Or you can go ahead and use a 40 weight thread and have it uh, show up more. And take and place the smaller of the two octahoot frames underneath and then the small one goes on top. Take one of the two handles. Now the way the octahoops work is because of their shape they can lock together without any clamp or screwing by just bringing with one hand the two frames together and then the other hand rests on the frame beneath and then you draw. So instead of elbows up and moving like this you're, you're going to sit in a more relaxed position. And we're using a straight stitch center needle position. Bring the bobbin thread up and then cut your threads a little short. Hold your finger down on the threads for a couple stitches. So you move away from the stitch where you're at and then I come back to it. Keep your eye focused just a little bit ahead of where you're going. And if you can lower your feed dogs on your sewing machine, go ahead and do so. And then you just draw, resting your elbows on the table. And I also like to set my machine on half or about three quarters speed. So if you have speed control on your machine, set your speed control to one, like three quarters of full speed. If you decide that you, you can go faster, then feel free to do so. What I like about this technique is we're actually just following what's already on the fabric, so there's no need to draw any design on the actual fabric. And you're just kind of tracing, just as you would do with a pen. So I've decided I'm going to go around all these little smaller florals and follow this subtle color change. We 
if you want to, you can go all the way around every single part of this, but then it'll kind of flatten out. So it's nice to leave some areas not quilted. Elbows down, relax your hands, so it's not really a hard squeeze on this. This really glides very easily on the surface of the machine. Now as you come around and you reach the outer limits of the inside of the frame, get there. Or should you start to feel uncomfortable or awkward because you feel like you're getting too close to the frame, then you just stop and there's no nothing to unclamp or unscrew. You just slide one frame over, the next frame goes over. You can switch to another hole, make sure your elbows are down, shoulders relaxed, and continue. A little stop here, a little stop there, but for the most part, it's free flowing. There's no drag of the uh, fabric sticking to the machine because we're not pushing down. And because you have your hand in the same position that you write in, You'll, you'll have a lot more control once you don't try squeezing or pushing down on the handle. So keep your, keep your hands soft. It's a very light, floating behavior. You just go ahead and continue around all the elements that you want to quilt and have fun with it. This is uh, a little bag. It's not a big quilt. It's a wonderful way to begin learning the art of free motion quilting. You can see how pretty the back is starting to look. It has this pattern that's been created by the fact that you're following the pattern on the front. So it's nice to have a solid on the opposite side. So now I'm going to size this up and make it a, an accurate or square it off so that it's the right size when divided in half. So if you take it and you fold it in half and you kind of finger press it, then you'll know where the center is. And I've already made sure that I cut the floral material the accurate size. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut along that edge to make the back fabric even. Take your time, make sure everything is parallel. This will be one side of the bag and this will be the other. And we'll be putting them together, right sides together. Since there is a pattern, we want to make sure we think about it, uh, how we want it to, to be when you see one side or the other. So I kind of like to have both of my butterflies being upright. And we're going to now address the zipper. And we're going to make the zipper actually smaller than the, out, than the overall length of the bag by about a half inch on both sides. So before I begin, I'm going to go ahead and cut off the little tab on the back end of the zipper. So this part right here, we're going to cut it down here. And then I'm going to be able to stitch over that because a nylon zipper you can sew right through with your sewing machine needle. See, I have a clean cut there. And the foot I'm going to use, I'm going to use um, is the pearls and piping foot for sewing this. It has this curved front end that helps it come up and over that little bump in there. So right sides together. Straight stitch. Oops, feed dogs back up again. So a few stitches. And I'm going to go ahead and use a left needle position, so I've got a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And I do sew slow over that nylon zipper, especially if I don't remember which needle I put on the machine. And this is an 80-12 needle. I would normally use a 90-14 round tip universal needle. And you can go back over it again the other way. And then we pull back, and that will give you a nice lead for putting the zipper into the bag. 
we'll be able to have that protrude out however far we need it to from the end of the material. So you can, if you want your zipper to be in more, you can bring it back that much and then on the front side you would have a material going to the end like that. So it's up to you how big you make this little tab. Whatever length you have it stick out from this end, you want to make sure you do the same on that side so that it looks like it has some continuity. And now we have our other piece of material that we're going to sew on this side. Right sides together and to make this easier you could actually use the glue and glue these down so that it can't move and wait for it to dry if you have the patience for that. But even just a little bit before you apply it will help to um, keep them from opening up as you stitch on there. Okay, so now you can see how you have this nice clean look on either side of the zipper. And we're going to now begin stitching this to the bag. Now to really be accurate so that you have real nice clean lines, you could glue the zipper down to the bag before beginning. And we're going to have um, to move the zipper pull as we stitch down and come back the other way. And using a right needle position, we move our needle all the way over to the right. And if you can't get your needle to go far enough over to the right, you can take the presser foot off and slide this little washer over to the other side and that will double your sewing machine's needle position. So go ahead and secure the beginning and the end of your zipper as well. So you can sew up, look four inches up in front and then plant your finger. And don't push down too hard because then you'll stop the fabric from feeding. The machine itself with this foot is actually guiding to make sure my stitch is straight on the zipper. I just make sure that my edges are lined up with each other. Plant my finger and so. Now I'm approaching the zipper pull and this is when you need to think ahead of time. Go ahead and lower your sewing machine needle down into the into the fabric just a little bit. So you don't want to lower your needle all the way down because then it's more difficult to open the zipper up. And we start to unzip. And go ahead and plant your finger again. And then you stitch all the way down to the end and go ahead and secure. And at the beginning I forgot to do that as you can see here. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch that now. Now when you open that up, see how nice and clean that looks? I'm going to go ahead and stitch the zipper to the back now. Make sure that you're even this way and that way. And then pull your zipper out to the edge. Line up your edge, make about four inches up. And you can see that the zipper pull is, is there. So it's time to zip that zipper close some more. Now if you do that and you get a little bit of a slack in your thread, you just pull the slack back toward the needle by pulling, or back toward the spool by just pulling the thread with the foot lowered. Coming to the end. Now this is our pearls and piping foot, but it will allow you to also stitch alongside of the zipper without actually having it over the top of it. And you can 
see how accurate that is stitched along the edge of that zipper because the foot kind of feels the seam allowance there. And I also have that to be able to focus on as I'm sewing. So instead of watching the sewing machine needle, you watch the front right side of the foot. And because this foot's designed to not stretch the fabric out of shape as you're sewing, you can go pretty fast without worrying about it. Isn't that beautiful? Nice accurate stitching. Now we're going to go ahead and close the bag. Go ahead and use the foot's edge as my guide in a left needle position. If you can't get your needle far over, remember you can take the foot off, slide the washer over, and that will move your needle position over. So if you sew forward and reverse, and this is also your opportunity to finish the edge of the fabric. But if I were to just continue stitching around this, I would end up in a very, very precarious position because I have the zipper closed. So if you were to stitch around and have that zipper closed the whole time, you won't be able to turn the bag right side out. So make sure you open your zipper up and then sew it with it open. It doesn't have to be all the, all the way open, but it should be open. And we can go ahead on the corner and lower the needle. We're not quite there yet. If you find that you have trouble with the fabric feeding through with all this thicknesses, then you can increase your stitch length. So if you feel like pushing, just remember, instead of pushing, lengthen the length instead. The machine itself should be the one taking the fabric through. You shouldn't feel the need to move your arms. Plant your, right, your elbow down on the table and just one finger guiding in front of the foot. Letting your body rest so you have proper posture. Lower the needle. Lift the foot. So all the way off. Come back on again. Now you're able to turn the bag right side out. But a bag of this size, it would really be nice if it could stand up. In order for it to stand up, we're going to go ahead and uh, create a corner. So you make sure your seam allowances are lined up with each other. But before you do that, you could now go with a zigzag stitch. And I like this one. Um, this is a multiple zigzag stitch. It does a zig 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 zag 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 zig 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 so you can watch the needle it goes one two three one two three one two three and that is a really good strong stitch to prevent the back from shredding inside of the inside when you put your jewelry inside you don't want to snag if you have an over casting stitch on your sewing machine you can also use that but this is fast I like speed when I'm sewing so now that all of our seams are finished, we're going to go ahead and create a, a, a false gusset in the bag by lining up the seam allowances with each other. And we're going to go ahead and make sure it's nice and flat. If you have one seam going this way and the other seam going the opposite way, it seems to work better. And think about how far away from the corner you are. And you want to maintain that same distance on the opposite corner when we sew that side. So it's a good idea to pay attention. If we use the zipper part that we cut off, now I know that that's going to line up with the left side of the foot on the other side. And I don't have to use a ruler, but if you have a ruler, you may as well use a ruler. Straight stitch. And go ahead and stitch across. Securing. Okay, 
going to do the same thing on the opposite side. Now, before cutting this off, I like to pull the bag open to make sure that everything looks good on the bottom. You can see how it squares off the back side of the bag. And allows it to stand up straight. And you have a little bit of the blue material showing on the ends of the bag. So since I know that I that I did the bottom well, I'm now going to cut off and finish the end of that because I think it looks sloppy to have that just hanging out there. Cut that off. Cut this one off. Use that same multiple zigzag stitch that we did before. And we're almost done. I like to finish my bag with one more finishing touch. And that is to add something to the zipper pull. So you can use the zipper itself as I did on this, this bag here, which made it complement it. Or I took some yarn that matched and made a little pull for that. And how do we get the yarn to go through that little hole on the end of the zipper is to take a piece of thread and then you just lay the yarn over the thread. Take that thread through. Just like that. And as you pull, the yarn will come right through there. And you can just tie a knot at the zipper, tie a knot at the end, or you could utilize more different colors of yarn, braid them together to create interesting appearances. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make this quilted travel bag and I look forward to seeing some of your bags that you create using the OctiHoops and the Creative Feet. If you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to do so. If you like what you see, please hit the like button and please feel free to share this with your friends.